I like to say that I came to plant care for the aesthetic, but I stayed for the wellness because plant friends, as someone who has really struggled with mental health, plants have been the most important, effective, and affordable tool for helping me on my mental health journey. These three plant life parallels that I'm about to share with you have changed my life in how I deal with imposter syndrome, depression, anxiety, loss, stress, and most importantly, feeling stuck. You are not alone. I hope these plant life parallels help. Hi, plant friends. I'm Maria, your new best plant friend, and I'm here to mostly help you care for plants, but more importantly, help you grow joy while doing so. Today's video is not going to be about plant care, but if you are here for the plant care, we've got so many videos that will help you do that. Today's video is all about helping you use plants to live a happier life. One of the biggest things for me when I was originally caring for plants, I used to be an epic plant killer. Now I'm a happy plant lady. When I was becoming my happy plant lady version of myself, I noticed that, you know, I started seeing my life lessons reflected back to me in my plants. I love self-help. I love self-development. I've done every meditation course, every yoga, you know, class, every juice cleanse. And it was wild that I found that my plants ended up being some of the best therapy at times. And I like to say, if you have a problem in your life, get in your garden, get with your house plants, and you'll find your answers. And I will challenge you to find a life circumstance that I cannot find a plant life parallel to. So if you want, drop your life circumstances in the comments below, and I, maybe I will respond with another video sharing a plant life parallel to whatever you might be going through. But what I have found and what I have struggled with the most is imposter syndrome, loss. I've gone through a lot of loss in the last couple of years and feeling stuck, feeling totally paralyzed and not knowing what to do. These three plant life parallels really helped me. So if you are in any of those experiences, if you are having any of those experiences, I hope these help you too. So let's start with imposter syndrome. Let me pull a few of my plant friends to help me explain to you. Okay, so now I need plants that grow differently. Okay, here are my plant friends. P.S. I should mention that I did write a whole self-help book. It's called Growing Joy, The Plant Lover's Guide to Cultivating Happiness. If any of this resonates with you, you're probably going to like my book. But let me, I write about these three things in the book. So let me just tell you. Okay. Imposter syndrome. We struggle with imposter syndrome when we don't feel like we're good enough. And usually that comes from looking at other people and thinking that they would do it better, right? Social media makes this so difficult. I am totally guilty of scrolling social media and thinking, oh my God, this person has that. I would only be happy if I had that. This person is so much happier than me. I should be farther along. I should be doing this. I should be doing that, right? No, you are exactly where you are supposed to be and you are exactly who you are supposed to be, right? And I'll always remember, this happened to me with my herb garden, but I'm going to demonstrate this with you with houseplants. I remember I was really struggling. I used to be an actress and I was really upset that I didn't book a Broadway show and this other girl that I knew did. And I was sitting with my herb garden one day and I noticed that all of the different herbs grew differently. Look at these houseplants. All of these plants grow differently. Some of them are lush. Some of them have waxy leaves. Some of them have super showy blooms. Some of them have to be dormant for a while, like this orchid, right? They all grow differently, and none of these plants, this orchid is not looking at this fern being like, oh man, I wish I had fluffier, more lush leaves, right? This anthurium is not looking at this orchid hoping that it had the same blossom. All of these plants inherently know exactly how to grow and exactly how to live the most efficient way for themselves. And I was just sitting on my balcony looking at my herbs, having the same experience, looking at my basil growing very differently than chives, growing very differently than sage, and thinking, man, these herbs are not spending any time trying to replicate and be like each other. And I think as humans, we can all be potted in, a, in pots of humanity, right? One large pot of humanity, and we're all planted, you know, densely with each other. And we're all supposed to grow in our own way. I love this orchid as an example because orchids go dormant and they go dormant for a while. This is the most showy, spectacular bloom, but this orchid sat dormant for a really long time 
And when it's in dormancy, it needs to gather its uh, strength before throwing off that new bloom, right? So I just think that's very poetic. So whichever way you are growing, you are growing so perfectly. You are growing exactly as time, exactly as it's been intended to. And with time, you will continue growing and achieve whatever you're looking for. I hope that helps. Since I was talking about my orchid, I have also found that that sense of feeling stuck can really paralyze you, right? When you feel like your life isn't moving forward, like you're not getting opportunities, like you're really struggling, like you're just kind of frozen. And I see being stuck as a period of dormancy. But this orchid, before it bloomed, plants need dormancy. Also, if you look at the trees outside that are deciduous, that drop all their leaves, you know, and they spend an entire winter bare, basically frozen before coming back to life. This orchid will bloom, the bloom will die, it will go dormant, it will generate more roots, it will probably grow more leaves. And the next time it blooms, there might be more flowers, the flowers might be more spectacular, maybe it'll grow two buds instead of one, right? Dormancy is so important. It's a quieter time but it allows us to build the resources that we need in order to bloom in a more expressed capacity, right? So if you're feeling stuck, can you reframe feeling stuck, feeling frozen as a period of dormancy where you're gathering all the resources and setting up your kind of external environment to further support you the next time it's time for you to accelerate growth? Last but not least, let's talk about loss. I've gone through a lot of loss in the last couple of years. I know we all have, right? Especially on the heels of the pandemic. It's so hard, whether it's loss of a job, loss of a loved one, loss of a home, loss of an environment, loss of, you know, a friend. Their loss is extremely painful. What I have found is the concept of pruning really helps me reframe loss. So let's look at my ficus belize pink plant, one of my favorite plants. This plant's doing great, right? It's growing, moving along, right? It will keep growing up. It'll keep putting out leaves. Great, 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 great. However, if I was to remove the top of this plant, it's actually going to instigate the plant. So when you prune a plant, it triggers the release of a hormone called auxin, which runs up and down the stem and triggers that bushy lateral growth, right? So if this plant was to continue growing the way it would, it would grow tall, but it wouldn't be able to support itself. And the stalk would eventually tip over. You'd have to prop it up. You'd have to, you know, or it would just be like lopsided. It'd be, it'd be existing, but it would be kind of lopsided. If I bravely prune something away, right? If I bravely prune this plant back while it's in this stage, it will shoot more lateral buds. And instead of having one lopsided stalk, it will have maybe three, four, five that grow together that kind of support each other a little bit better. Uh, you can tie strings, you know, like you can, it, the plant just ends up being more robust. And then maybe you prune back again and that prune will, tr will trigger new growth. So with loss, is there a way that you can reframe it as being something being taken away to allow for you to set forth something new? I spent a decade as a musical theater performer I lost my job in the pandemic. It allowed me to be able to create these crazy pieces of content for you, right? If you lose a, a friend, if you go through a, a, you know, a friend breakup, maybe that friend allowed for, you know, creating space for new friends to come in that are better supportive for you in this new phase of your life. There's so many different ways that you can interpret this, but prune back to trigger new growth. I hope this was helpful for you. Did anything resonate in particular? Did one of the three metaphors we talk about resonate the most for you? Let me know in the comments. And I mean it, challenge me to a life circumstance and I will find a plant life parallel for it and make future videos because this is something I'm very passionate about and I really do think you can find a plant life parallel for almost anything going on in your life. I hope you continue to cultivate your plants and help them grow and unfurl into big, beautiful, big, beautiful, expansive plants. And in doing that, I hope it helps you continue to expand and unfurl and of course keep growing joy.